Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Torsellini, and in this episode, we'll be kicking off our Building Envelope module by talking a little bit about the first law of thermodynamics. It's important to start with these fundamental principles of thermodynamics because it will set the stage for our overall understanding of how energy moves in and around buildings. Looking at the word thermodynamics, it can be broken into two pieces, thermo and dynamic. The Greek origin describes the force or the power of something that is hot. In our context, it's really about the tracking of energy. And the first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Now think about that for a moment. We are never creating energy out of nothing. Energy is constantly being transferred and transformed and building science is all about studying how these processes happen within and around a structure. And so in order to measure these movements and transformations of energy, we need to define a system boundary. This is the first step of any thermodynamic problem. Without a boundary, we cannot track the transfers. After defining this boundary, the next step is to identify the different energy flows that cross the boundary. In general, we look at three major types of energy flows, work, heat, and the energy associated with mass crossing the boundary. Heat and work are different ways of transferring energy across the boundary. From the building science point of view, heat is the transfer of thermal energy across the boundary because of a temperature difference at the boundary, and work is the transfer of mechanical or electrical energy across the boundary. So a power line crossing the boundary into a building is considered electrical work entering the building. Energy being lost from a warm building in the winter to the cold surroundings is heat. Well, what about a natural gas pipeline that enters the building for the furnace and for cooking? Is that heat or work? This one is actually the energy associated with the mass of natural grass crossing the boundary. However, for simplicity, we can think of that as an equivalent amount of heat that is crossing that boundary. We symbolize work with a W and heat with a Q, and that represents the energy that has crossed the boundary. When I add energy to a system, that has to be equal to the change of energy of that system. However, we show the change of energy as the change of E. So in this simplified version of the first law of thermodynamics, we can look at work plus the heat going in has to be equal to the change of energy within that system or within that control volume. One thing to note is that the direction of flow is important. So we'll draw another system here and we'll say we've got some mechanical work and some electrical work going into the system. And then maybe we also have some heat that's going into it. That could be represented in our case by the energy content in a certain type of fuel, such as propane or maybe natural gas. And so then we might also have some heat that is being lost from the system. We'll call that Q lost. We need to go through and add up all those different flows that are going in and out. And we do that by drawing the energy flows across the boundary. Typically we show that as arrows going in is positive and arrows out are negative. In this case, we have work coming in from two different sources. We're adding some heat from another source and we've got some heat that is lost. And so the sum of these flows is equal to the change of energy or delta E. Now, it's important to keep track of these signs. I like to keep everything going in as positive and everything going out as negative. Now, often when we talk about energy flows in and around buildings, we refer to it as something that's happening over a long period of time. Perhaps we are looking at energy flows over the course of a day, a month, or more typically a year. We can think about that building as being in the same energy state at the end of this time period as it was at the beginning, which tells us that the energy of the system does not change over the course of the time period. So that change in E is often equal to zero. And at the end of the day, really what we're going to try to do is add up all the energy that's flowing into the building and equate it to all the energy that's leaving the building. 
So how do we apply this concept of energy in equals energy out as it relates to building science? That's actually a very powerful question because energy can't be created or destroyed. And so then we start thinking, how am I going to measure all of these energy flows? Some of the energy flows are really easy to measure. If we have electricity that's entering the house and electricity is technically considered work, or perhaps we have some fuel that's coming in, we measure those with the utility meter because that's what we buy. Let's look at a house. Even though we picked a house for discussion, the same principles apply for commercial buildings such as schools as well. The energy flows escaping the building are much harder to measure, so we're going to look at an example of a house to explain. In order for the house to balance out, the energy going in, the energy we're buying, really ends up representing how much energy is leaving the house, whether it's going through the walls or through the windows, Maybe it's leaking out of the attic. Maybe we're losing some heat out of the floor. We could even be losing some heat out of the chimney, especially if you've got a gas appliance. And at the end of the day, we want to quantify all these pieces to try to understand the energy flow. But ultimately, it comes down to the fact that the energy flows coming into the building need to balance with the energy flows that are coming out of or escaping the building. In the next several episodes, we're going to be looking at this concept of measuring the energy going in and it equaling the energy leaving the house. We're going to start studying how energy flows through walls, windows, and doors, and how we can use that information to determine how much energy a house needs. That energy escaping is balanced with the energy that we need to generate, whether that energy comes from photovoltaic panels, electricity from the grid, or another fuel sources such as natural gas. Now, that's really important to think about because if I can reduce the amount of energy escaping, then I don't have to bring in as much energy from another source and pay for that energy. Well, thanks for watching this episode. And as always, feel free to send us any questions or comments that you might have.